Secretary of Treasury. Deals with money. Hi, welcome back to Mr. Raymond's Civics EOC Academy, where today we will be looking at international organizations like the Red Cross and the World Trade Organization. Now, last time we looked at foreign policy and how the president and Congress deal with countries around the world. So if you haven't watched that, be sure to go back to our channel and check it out. There are several international organizations that the United States government and individual Americans participate in that you will need to know for your exam. And these include the United Nations, the International Court of Justice, NAFTA, and NATO that we talked about before. But before we jump into those, a reminder to teachers that this PowerPoint lesson plans, activities, and worksheets are all available at Teachers Pay Teachers. Just search for Mr. Raymond Civics EOC Academy. So let's start with our first one. You're probably familiar with the United Nations. This is an organization made up of close to 200 countries from around the world. The UN, with its headquarters in New York City, was designed to be a place where countries could come to discuss their issues without resorting to violence and war, which has plagued our planet for far too long. Maintaining peace and building friendships is the number one goal of the UN, as well as providing a forum where countries could gather to discuss global issues. The General Assembly is the gathering of all of these countries. This is the giant room where speeches are given and they can vote on issues. The UN also has what is known as the Security Council. This group of countries decides what to do when two or more countries are waging war or are on the verge of fighting. There are five permanent members of the UN Security Council and these are the big guys, the United States, Britain, Russia, China and France. Now, in addition to the five members, 10 additional countries join the permanent members for two-year terms, making a total of 15 countries on the Security Council, deciding what to do about fights. The Security Council will try to broker ceasefires between two sides. They can pass sanctions, which as you know from our last video is when you block trade with another country as a punishment. They can send troops or observers, and if worse comes to worse, they can use military force. Now, here is a map of where UN peacekeepers have been sent in the past, a lot in Africa and Asia and the Middle East. The big five permanent members have a veto power, which means that one member can stop the entire council from taking action against a country. And this has come up recently during the Syrian civil war in which Russia and China, who are allies with Syrian leader Bashar al-Assad, have been able to stop the other members from stepping in to deal with the Syrian leader who is accused of using biological weapons against his own people. However, the UN is not all about fights. The United Nations has a program called UNICEF, the United Nations Children's Emergency Fund. UNICEF's goal is to help children around the world. They collect funds to distribute emergency relief from famine and poverty and disease. UNICEF also provides education programs in areas where there are no schools. Now, I remember as a kid during Halloween when kids would carry around boxes to collect change for UNICEF. I probably should have joined them. So while UNICEF is part of the United Nations, they operate semi-independently and rely on fundraising. So when you think of UNICEF, think of it as a great UN program to help kids around the world. The UN also has the International Court of Justice, usually just referred to as the World Court. It's located in the Netherlands in a town called The Hague. And here is where countries can settle disputes in a court of law, as well as a place where war criminals and rulers who have done terrible things to their people can be tried for their crimes. The problem is sometimes getting these bad guys all the way to Europe to face trial, as there's not really a police force to go out and get them. As more and more countries interact with one another, people are looking for the International Court of Justice to play a bigger role in the future of our global world. A lot of people, however, criticize the United Nations as being weak and unable to stop wars. And for that reason, our next group continues to play a big role in foreign conflicts, NATO, 
or the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. This is a defensive treaty or really a military alliance between the United States, Canada, and 25 European countries. We covered NATO in our last video. This treaty and international organization is based on the idea of collective security. The countries in this organization basically agree to combine their militaries and announce to the world that if a country messes with one of its members, the other countries will come to their defense. Now, NATO was created after World War II, at the beginning of the Cold War, mostly between the United States and their Western European allies and their new enemy, Communist Russia, now the Soviet Union. We'll look at the Cold War in our next video, in which you can see on this map, a line was drawn through Europe with NATO on one side and the Soviet Union with the countries they controlled in Eastern Europe on the other side. While the two sides never directly fought one another, the world lived in fear of NATO and the Soviet Union going to war, and when I say NATO, I mostly mean the United States. With the collapse of the Soviet Union around 1990, former Soviet states like Poland and Croatia have joined NATO, making present-day Russia feel more threatened by NATO. NATO has sent troops and undertaken military operations in Afghanistan, Kosovo, Iraq, and Africa. Of course, the United States, with by far the most advanced military in the world, makes up the bulk of NATO forces and operations. And a lot of these wars or conflicts are considered to be strictly U.S. wars, but as you can see with this German troop in Iraq, these are actually NATO operations. Our next group, the Red Cross, is an international organization that developed out of war. You've probably seen the Red Cross in your neighborhood or if your town has dealt with a flood or a hurricane. Very often they have blood drives to use during times of emergencies, but the Red Cross is an international organization. The Red Cross and Red Crescent, Crescent if located in a Muslim country, is an example of an NGO or a non-governmental organization. And that's a phrase you need to know for your exam. An NGO means that this group is not tied to any country. This allows it to operate freely throughout the world. They provide a lot of emergency relief, such as food, water, and medical supplies for those whose homes or towns have been destroyed by a disaster or by war. They also monitor the treatment of prisoner of wars and go to conflicts to make sure that no war crimes are taking place. In fact, as I said, the Red Cross began as an organization to help those who were wounded during wars. The big Red Cross was a sign that these were not soldiers and shouldn't be shot at. Part of why it's important for the Red Cross to be an NGO is that they remain neutral and help wounded from both sides of a war. And since they are neutral, governments are more likely to let them come into their countries to help. While the headquarters of the International Red Cross is in Geneva, Switzerland, there are branches of the Red Cross in countries throughout the world. In addition to the Red Cross, there are many NGOs dedicated to helping people around the world. There is Doctors Without Borders providing free emergency health care in disaster areas, Oxfam, fighting famine and disease, Amnesty International who, sp who speak out for human rights and political prisoners, and Save the Children helping kids get health care and education. Our next group is an economic association. The WTO, or World Trade Organization, is made up of 162 countries around the world and was created with the goal of increasing free trade. Free trade means that countries will buy and sell goods from one another without placing taxes on imports. And this brings up a word that you need to know, tariffs. Tariffs are taxes on imports. Tariffs were used by countries for a long time to protect businesses and companies inside their country. This diagram shows how a tax on British cloth would protect American cloth makers by making the British product more expensive. And this is known as protectionism. Protectionism was practiced by the United States and countries around the world for a long time, but it seems to be a thing of the past. Today, we use the word globalization to describe how countries from all over the world trade with one another, and that is what the WTO is all about. 
The WTO is not without criticism. In fact, a protest in Seattle at a 1999 WTO conference led to a major riot. As some say, the WTO is more about helping large companies and corporations than it is about helping people. America has a similar agreement, which we covered last time, called the NAFTA, or the North American Free Trade Agreement. This is an economic treaty between the United States, Canada, and Mexico, in which the three countries trade freely without taxing each other. And here is that word tariff again, which is a tax on imports. NAFTA is not without critics either. Here are some American auto workers protesting NAFTA as several car companies have moved factories to Mexico in search of cheaper labor. NAFTA, like the World Trade Organization, represents the challenge in America of keeping manufacturing jobs here versus our desire for cheap products. So keep in mind for international organizations, the ones that you need to know. The U.S. are either members like they are in the U.N., the WTO, NAFTA, and NATO, or they are impacted and participating groups such as NGOs like the Red Cross and Doctors Without Borders. And that's our brief look at international organizations. Up next is U.S. foreign conflicts, basically a review of U.S. foreign wars. But before we go there, let's review. What are the goals of the United Nations? The goals are to maintain world peace, settle disputes, discuss issues, and there's other things like helping people around the world. What part of the UN decides to use military force? Remember, there's five permanent members on this. That is the UN Security Council. Who are the permanent members of the UN Security Council? Think the big ones. Remember, it's the US, Britain, France, Russia, and China. What is the goal of UNICEF? Remember those kids on Halloween? That is helping children. What types of trials take place at the world court? Well, the world court can settle disputes between countries. They deal with war crimes and crimes against humanity, hopefully more taking down leaders who are doing bad things to their own people. What type of group is the Red Cross in that it is a neutral organization? Remember, that means that it's not part of a government, therefore it's an NGO, a non-governmental organization. What is a tariff? A tariff is a tax on imports. Used to be big things, not so much anymore. What is the goal of the WTO, World Trade Organization? Well, you see trade right in the name, so you know it's about free trade and getting rid of those pesky tariffs, keeping costs down. What is it called when a country puts tariffs on imports to help their own countries companies and corporations and businesses. Remember, they are protecting them, so it's protectionism. What is the, quote, collective security organization between the U.S., Canada, and European countries called? That would be NATO, North Atlantic Treaty Organization. What is the agreement between the U.S., Canada, and Mexico promoting free trade called, well, it's got free trade right in the name, NAFTA, the North American Free Trade Agreement, and that is it. Thanks for watching, guys. Up next, we're going to be looking at U.S. foreign conflicts. For those of you who are into our wars, you're going to enjoy that one. Be sure to subscribe, and just a reminder, teachers, that this PowerPoint lesson plans, activities, and worksheets are all available at Teachers Pay Teachers. Just search for Mr. Raymond's Civic COC Academy.